When you hear Ozzy and Harriet, it probably brings to mind in most people images of the beloved sitcom that ran from 1952 to 1966. It was iconic and redefined how we looked at the genre. In addition to being a widely popular television show, its origins started over a century ago, in the days when airwaves reigned supreme and families would crowd around the radio on a weekly basis to see what would happen next on their favorite serials. Ozzy and Harriet would also prove to be a launching pad for Ricky Nelson's musical career. Few shows ever packed the punch that Ozzy and Harriet did. Let's take a little peek at the origins of the show and how it became such a landslide success. Facts First presents The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet Left Behind a Legacy. Before we take a look at the show that would launch a family's career into superstardom, make sure you hit like, subscribe to this channel, and tap that bell icon to turn on notifications. Mr. Ozzy Nelson may not have seemed like the most likely candidate as a sitcom guru. He was born in 1906 and lived a fairly typical childhood. He joined the Boy Scouts as a young boy, became a football player in high school, and continued that same passion into college all the while he was studying law. His dream was to become a professional musician. He started a band in 1930 called the Ozzy Nelson Band and started pumping out fairly popular albums. In 1935, he would even release And Then Some, a record that would take the number one ranking in the country. It was in that same year he would marry the love of his life, Harriet, thus formulating the duo that would send their family's careers into the realm of superstardom. In 1936, David, their eldest child, was born, and just a few short years later, in 1940, Eric, or as you may know him, Ricky, was born. The family was certainly coming together and gaining momentum. They would travel for a few years before deciding they wanted to take their show off the road in order to focus on stability. It was around this time they would lay the seed that would eventually give birth to their hit TV show by venturing into radio. From radio to TV, the family became recurring favorites on The Red Skelton Show. When Mr. Skelton was summoned by the armed forces to serve in 1944, Ozzy knew it was finally the right opportunity to start a show of their own. In early October of 1944, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet would make its fateful debut on the radio waves. The show would quickly rise in popularity and would stay fruitful for the family for 10 years. It would even air concurrently with their TV show for two years. ABC knew that Ozzy and Harriet and their boys had serious chemistry on the radio. They were tapping into something the public couldn't get enough of. So as the 1950s rolled on, the television network knew they had to expand upon their massive appeal by putting them on the screen. At the time, given the burgeoning genesis of television, it was standard practice for popular radio programs to make the leap to the television screen. Typically at this time, shows would be trial run as a pilot to gauge viewer interest before being greenlit for a full series. Here Comes the Nelsons was released in 1952 as a feature-length film. Following the film's very favorable reception, Ozzy landed an eyebrow-raising 10-year contract with ABC. This kind of deal was unheard of at the time. On October 10, 1952, The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet would finally begin its illustrious run on the small screen. The show followed a pretty typical sitcom formula, but was made all the more fascinating for the viewing audience for employing a fiction-mirrors-reality approach that relied heavily on intertextuality. All the outside shots of their house were from the real-life Nelson family home. Every interior set was a facsimile of their actual house. It created a sort of surreal genuineness that proved to be the perfect foundation for comedy. When we watched the show, it felt like we were being given an inside look at the Nelson family. Ricky's Musical Career Ozzy had an eye for talent and wasn't oblivious of the enormous popularity that rock and roll was experiencing during these years. He knew his son Ricky had what it took to make a hit record. Ricky would record a few songs at Verve Records with the help of his father's networking in the entertainment industry. It's always nice to have an in. Ozzy Nelson certainly had connections. Sure enough, Ricky would hit gold with his Fats Domino cover, I'm Walkin', which went to number four in 1957, and the song A Teenager's Romance that would go to number two in that same year. This was enough to skyrocket his popularity to the stars. He would soon land a major record deal with Imperial Records that gave him a ton of creative freedom, and then by 1969 he would have more hits than any other artist at the time. Twelve out of the top 40 songs at the time were all his, and in the next five years he would have 30 hit songs. Very few artists have ever been able to boast that kind of success. The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet winds down. Ten years is a pretty good run. Few shows can tout they've been around for a full decade. 
The 60s, however, were a time of immense cultural change. The youth of that decade saw the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet to be too tame for their liking. It was a pretty centrist, no-frills, safe show for a time that was seeing radical change and upheaval. Ricky's music career would also decline as the world was enthralled with British bands like the Beatles and the Animals. The last episode of the show aired in late April of 1966, but would immediately go into syndication, retaining its popularity until the present day. Banking on this lingering appeal, a spin-off show would run from 1973 to 74 called Ozzy's Girls, which involved Ozzy and Harriet cohabitating with two college girls who were renting out their boys' rooms after they moved out. Life after Ozzy and Harriet Even after the curtains closed on the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet, Ozzy Nelson continued to work as a television director. He would keep his career going until his death in 1975. Harriet, however, never really ventured back into the world of show business. She avoided the limelight as much as she could, only doing occasional work on screen until her passing in 1994. David, on the other hand, much like his father, embraced showbiz and became a very successful media production man working on TV shows, feature films, and commercials all the way up until his death in 2011 from cancer. Unlike most child stars who view their unorthodox upbringing with some disdain, Ricky never regretted his upbringing in the industry. He looked back on his youthful years fondly and recounted that his parents always were supportive and never forced him or his brother into being performers. They all had intense chemistry on screen, but it was the underlying familial love off screen that kept him going. His music career would continue to shine and he would continue to produce memorable hits all the way up until his tragic death in 1985. His plane went down when he was on the way to a concert. He left behind four children that would all follow in their father's footsteps with thriving careers in the music and entertainment industry. In fact, Ricky's twin sons, Gunner and Matthew, would formulate a rock band called Nelson that would see a number one hit in 1990 called I Can't Live Without Your Love and Affection, thus making the Nelson clan the first family ever to have three generations of musicians to take the number one spot. A Legacy Left Behind The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet was one of the longest-running TV shows of all time. In terms of sitcoms, it only has one claimant to outrunning its years on the air, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and even that show still had far fewer episodes due to much shorter seasons. Even though the show may have ended decades ago, it will always be alive in our hearts. Its almost 300 episodes still continue to be aired in syndication. The legacy of the show is alive and well not only on reruns, but also with the prospect of remastered episodes on the horizon. The show left behind a memorable imprint on the entertainment industry. The Nelson family became synonymous with the American dream. They not only worked well together on screen, but they stuck together as a supportive family. They remain a model for us all and legends from the realm of television, radio, and music. Well, that wraps up our exclusive inside look at the Nelson family and the adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Now we want to hear from you. Do you think there are other families of entertainers today that live up to the blueprint that the Nelson family left behind? Or do you think they were unique in the way of finding commercial success while maintaining a healthy familial dynamic? Let us know in the comments. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to Facts First for more videos.